It's Black and Abdallah here on ESPN 1000, the ESPN Chicago app, and also on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. It's Black and Abdallah. After hours, we're talking Bears football with you. And Abdallah, today, uh, practice number eight is in the books for the Chicago Bears. They were inside today because of weather up uh, in Lake Forest near Hallis Hall. So they were inside. It seemed like a uh, slower practice or maybe not as a high-intensity practice that we heard about over the weekend from mm-hmm. reading all of the reports up at Hallis Hall. A lot of stuff to get to on today's episode because it seems like a lot of things happened over practice the last three days up at Hallis Hall, Saturday, Sunday, and then also today. Yeah, so to go through the weekend, uh, we saw a lot more false starts. We saw defense one, quote, one both days, Friday, Saturday. They were off yesterday on Sunday. Um, but it is really some struggles for the offense uh, the last two days. Offense rebounded a little bit today. Um, you know, they struggled in the two-minute drill when they, you know, simulate the two-minute drill at the end of practice. But no false starts from what we can tell from what was being reported uh, out there at camp today. So that was good. But also a few guys with the day off. You know, Nate Davis is off today. Roma Dunze sat out of practice today. Um, and we heard from Caleb Williams. We heard from the quarterback spoke today before uh, their game on uh, Thursday, the Hall of Fame game. You know, the biggest topic with Caleb Williams at this point is will he or won't he play in Thursday's Hall mm-hmm. of Fame game? And I, I think that's where a lot of this, is, there's a lot of nuance to this conversation. Is it necessary to have everyone play in the Hall of Fame game? Probably not. No. I, though, lean on the idea that when you have zero experience, some experience is good. So if we go into Thursday night's game and Caleb Williams is not playing, then, boy, when we look back and if the Bears get off to a slow start like they did last season, the blame is going to go directly at Matt Eberflus for not having his players ready to play for the second year in a row. I, I feel as if the way to get around that is get ahead of it. Have the reps in these games, even if it's four to seven plays, yeah, one series. I would like to see Caleb Williams go out there and at least have the uniform on, go through the pregame warm up, and take the first team offense out on the field, get in the huddle, get up to the offensive line, have no penalties, no procedural issues. That's what I want to see in game one, the Hall of Fame game. So if it is just three and out, or or just a handful of plays, I'm okay with that. I don't need a lot out of the first game, but I do think it's important that Caleb Williams, Roma Dunze, and the other players uh, who are new to this team get out there and just go through the motions in the Hall of Fame game on Thursday. I kind of agree with you, but I won't be pounding the desk upset if – We find out tomorrow from Matt Eberflus, who's going to meet the media and then tell everyone, the reporters and all of us, uh, whether or not Caleb Williams is going to play on Thursday. I won't necessarily be upset as long as he plays in the what is everyone else's in the league's first, second and final preseason game. Right. Like, I understand you have the extra game. They've only had a couple padded practice. You just said this has only been their eighth practice as a team. Right. It's more important for me to get the offensive lineman out there to figure out what you're doing at center, all that kind of stuff. And then I understand you've got the luxury of having the extra preseason game. So either way, whether he plays one series or not at all, I'm not going to be angry about it. I'll save my anger for when we get to the, the second preseason game. And it's like, okay, well, he's not playing this one. Now something is up because he should be playing. A, a, a s- amount of snaps, right? You should be getting some work. So if it's one series on Thursday, and then it's two series in the second preseason game, and then it's a full quarter in the third preseason game, and then maybe it's nothing in the final preseason game, I don't think he's going to play every preseason game. I don't think he's going to. So I think he's going to play in three games. So if he plays in the beginning, in the first one or the last one, then that's that's fine. What's I don't with see the, it's a big what's deal. With the bubble wrap? It's not bubble wrap. Why are you soft, bro? It's, it's not, not being soft. soft. It's, just, it's just what they're going to do. It's how the NFL works. <laughs> it's just the, the way, like, I don't agree with it, right? Like, I don't think it's the way it should be. If I were Matt Eberflus in the Bears, he would go out for one series, no matter how bad or good it is. If you hand off the ball three times, you hand off the ball three times and right. punt, right? You're out there for three for a series. Then in the second preseason game, 
you get half a quarter, two series, whatever that amounts to. Okay. Uh, and then in the third preseason game, you get a full quarter. And then in the fourth preseason game, you play it by ear. If you think he's gotten enough snaps in that, you know, whatever it is, two quarters worth of work, then fine. Then he doesn't need to go back out there. Um, this isn't someone who's coming in having never played football before. Like not get like when Trubisky came in, the dude just didn't play a lot in college. So like he needed reps and he didn't get a lot of reps in the preseason. Justin Fields probably needed more than he should have had because he didn't play at all last year. And then, you know, with Caleb Williams, it's, I think Matt Eberflus learned his lesson and is going to play guys in the preseason. Well, I'll, I'll retort your response with this. You mentioned Trubisky didn't play a lot. Caleb Williams never took a snap under center. Yeah, that's fair. In college football. And that that's something that if you roll him out and you give him the first series and you have him hand off twice and then on the third play, it's a play action pass, but mm -hmm. you're kind of telling him, hey, dump it off into the flat to a running back. Don't really take any chances. Just get out there and move your legs, get under center, take the snap, make sure it's clean, and then get off the field. I don't see any harm with that. I feel as if everyone is just so worried about an injury or something happening. They, they're football players. They got to play. They got to get out there. Okay, but if, what's if the I benefit had... of that, though? Like, what's how is he learning anything by going out there and handing Mentally off the ball preparing two times. To, to get yourself ready for a game. He you can do through, all that and not actually the play game warmups. You go out there with the first team. He can do all that Be a professional. He can do all of that. But, but why what, are you scared? I'm not. I think you sound he, scared. I think he should play. Okay. But to go out there and to hand the ball off three times, there's no difference in standing on the sidelines for that time. No, What's the difference? I, there's something to the starting quarterback taking his team out on the field to get the, the game going, get those jitters out of the way, just make it more of a natural uh, habit of the way he's going to operate as a quarterback for this team, for this franchise. I don't, I don't uh, subscribe to people who are scared by the injuries. They play football. No. He could gonna... get injured in practice. Yeah. We heard twice on Friday and Saturday over the weekend, Montez was, was, was told to calm it down. He was removed from drills mm -hmm. because he kept hitting Caleb Williams' arm as it was going on, as practice was taking place. And I think that's something that we look at and we talk about uh, Caleb Williams, and Montez Sweat, and we look at this whole situation, and with Montez being pulled out of the practice, clearly he was getting hit. He could have been injured on those plays. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that's where I don't have a problem with it. I also subscribe to this idea. Caleb Williams in this preseason needs to play one full game. If you want to break it down with he gets a half in the second game, he gets a quarter in the first and a quarter in the last, and he doesn't play one of those games or something. That's fine by me. However you break it up, I think he should get one full game simulation throughout the entire preseason. Give me a full half in one game. Give me a couple quarters. That's what I'm looking for from Caleb Williams. I want week one to be – I want him ready to go. I don't want this – Oh, well, the Bears uh, only scored 13 points against the Titans because the offense was slow and they looked all disorganized and Caleb was unsure and they weren't ready to go when the season started. I want them ready to go for week one. Listen, I'm fine if they only score 13 points as long as they only give up 10. You know, like I don't like that's fine. I understand that this is how the NFL works. Like you're going to not you're not playing. He's, he's not getting a full game. I'll tell you that right now. He's not going to play a full game like total. I know what you mean by not like. It's not like he's going to go out there against the the Texans and play all four quarters. Yeah, I, I know didn't what say you, that. I, I said, know what you mean. I said a full yeah. game throughout the entire I think he, span of the preseason. I think he gets a half I during mean, the entire. A preseason. full game is just one quarter a game. I understand that. I think he gets a half throughout the entire preseason. That's too light. It might be, but it's better than last year when then the Bears didn't do anything during the preseason. They did nothing. So if you look at what Matt Eberflus said at the beginning of the training camp, he said that he would look into what guys like CJ Stroud and did and Jordan Love did in the preseason, and it was about 45 to 50 snaps. So you figure that that's probably a half. So he's probably going to play a half total. So I could see a series on Thursday, a couple series on uh, their next game that Saturday. The Saturday after that, he plays a quarter and then maybe he doesn't play the final game, depending on how they they space it out. What I don't want to hear is Matt Eberflus say after their joint practice with the Bengals, say that, well, we thought the guys did enough.
during this joint practice because that's the same trap you fell into last year. Yeah. Where you said they got enough work in these joint practices and then they didn't go out and play in the preseason. And then, like you mentioned, they were not ready and they looked really bad against the Packers. So Courtney Cronin has all of our training camp reports. Follow her on uh, social media and also you can listen to her reports on ESPN 1000. Uh, Courtney gave us the information not practicing today was Nate Davis. Uh, Gordon, Homer, Wheeler, Martin, and Webster all didn't practice today. But Nate Davis, this now makes consecutive practices that Nate, Nate Davis has been out. He's listed as day-to-day. Is there any concern from you that now, once again, the pads go on on Friday, and now Nate Davis is in a situation where he's in and out of being available to practice uh, with this team here in the preseason? I mean, until I see like a string of these days together, maybe they're just trying to, you know, pad extra days off for him uh, where he gets a day off before an off day and a day off after the off day. I, I've said it before. You can watch the videos, you know, down there. I want to see more of the offensive line playing together necessarily more than I need to see Caleb play, you know, because this offensive line, you're working in new centers. You might be working in a new a guard position battle for Nate Davis. Like, These guys have to play and figure out who the best guys are. Like we know who's going to be tackles. Like we know the tackles are set, right? But those three spots in the middle, you got to figure out what you're going to end up doing because, you know, you've got new centers that you're working out. That center to quarterback exchange has to work well. You've got to figure out what you're doing with Nate Davis. So if to me, those guys need to be out there now, Nate, they might've already made their decision on Nate Davis and said, Hey, you know what? There's not a position battle. You came in, you worked. We know what you're going to do. You're fine. And maybe now they're getting him days off because of that. But as of right now, yeah, it's kind of concerning that he put the pads on and all of a sudden he's like, no, I'm not, not today guys. Shane Waldron told the media earlier today that uh, Nate Davis is the starter. So, Uh, yeah. So, so we'll find out Uh, the first team reps on the offensive line today. Coleman Shelton was at center. Ryan Bates was at right guard in replace of Nate Davis. Another talking point up at camp today because Caleb Williams met with the media was talking about his progress to this point through training camp. Let's listen to the quarterback. Here's Caleb Williams. I think I'm on track um, to, to, to be ready uh, exactly where you know I need to be and where they want me to be. Um, I'm excited. Um, every day I wake up and learn something new, um, you know, and so, uh, you know, getting ready for, you know, the season, preseason, uh, and then these, you know, these, these next practices. Uh, I'm very excited, uh, still progressing. Um, but we're, we're towards the in- install right now uh, for this for this portion, uh, which is very exciting um, to think that, you know, not too long ago, I didn't know really anything about this offense. And now I, you know, I know a lot more than I did then. So uh, progressing, excited, um, and, and ready to go. So that's Caleb Williams. And... I like the humble nature of his response, knowing that he doesn't know everything, but understanding that this is going to take time to figure it out, and he is making progress. Mm-hmm. I I don't think there's anything negative to look at with Caleb Williams at this point. He He's played pretty well in camp. Uh, I know we can knock the, the issues with the offensive line and the false starts. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, I mean, it seems like he's getting it, and... He's coming along. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, we talked about how the the false start issues and how those would probably be cleaned up over the weekend. Well, they were. They had an off day. They figured it out. And today they didn't have any false starts. You know, Um, we'll see once they get in pads again in full go and see if those start to creep up again once it's a different mentality when you're in pads it's a different mentality when you're in in in-game situation so probably why you should play in the preseason yeah well exactly like if that's why i want the offensive line well the cadence is going to still be the same right like the quarterbacks use the same terminology and the same cadence not to mess everything up so yes the offensive lineman probably why you should get out there and play probably should tell matt (laughs) eberflus um and so i i i I like where he's at and what he's saying. And he's like, yeah, I mean, listen, it's been the first week of practice. We're not there yet, but they're on track. And if the season started today, no, they're not ready. But thankfully you have about a month, a little over a month until the season actually starts. Courtney Cronin then reports that there were two notable throws from Caleb Williams on 11 on 11 today, one to Keenan Allen. Uh, It was in the back of the end zone where Allen outstretched his arms to haul in a pass Two plays later, Williams throws anticipatory throw to Roma Dunze in a tight window. 
um, on the opposite side of the end zone in between defenders. So nice throws in the end zone, one to Keenan L, one to Roma Dunze. It's great news. Can't complain about that, right? It, I love hearing that there's some good throws. Say happening. those words again. Good Say touchdowns. Anticipatory throws yeah. into a tight window. I mean, it's in between mm. defenders, too. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what we're looking for because in years past, it seemed very uh, paint by the numbers quarterbacking with yeah. Trubisky and then Justin Fields. It was a see it, throw it situation. It was not trusting your receivers to make plays for you. And then also, those situations in the red zone. We know there's less space, less time to make decisions, less uh, spots to kind of put the football in. Mm -hmm. The fact that he is um, getting some wins against a very good defense in camp, I think is all very positive information for Bears fans. Yeah, and I think it's good that, uh, you know, you didn't have a report coming out today from Courtney saying, well, the defense definitely won the day. Like the offense adjusted, they were not in pads. So we'll see like next time, like the padded practices mean more. You know, like they obviously and maybe more guys are out there. Maybe Nate Davis is taking off days with pads now. Maybe that's his new thing. Maybe he only wants to practice in pads. That could be his new thing, right? Right, guys? Right? I don't know. Come on. That could be. I don't know. Could that be it? I don't think that's it. Can that please? Can that please be it? I don't think it's going to be it. But no, it's good to hear that they've adjusted and they've, you know, taken care of the snap count for now. And, you know, but again, Defense still finding plays. Montez Sweat still getting into the backfield. Montez Sweat still creating problems on offense for their on, on defense for the offense. So that stuff is good to hear when you uh, get into these practice breakdowns. Since the last time we recorded a podcast, uh, we had some big news in the NFL. Two big signings. Tua Tungavailoa signs his new deal, four years, two hundred and twelve million dollars. And then Jordan Love signed his new deal. This was on Friday, four years, two hundred twenty million dollars. Uh, do you have any thoughts on Tua and Love both getting their new contracts? Obviously, this is the rate that you're a starting quarterback for good teams and you've won games. You're going to be thrown to the top of the board as far as most guaranteed dollars and the, the largest contract in NFL history. I would trust Jordan Love going forward a little bit more than I would Tua Tung by law, just mm -hmm. based on the health situation with Tua in the past. And you can never guarantee someone's going to be okay from head injuries. Yeah. And and unfortunately, one big sack or throw down to the turf mm -hmm. could really uh, derail to his career. And Jordan Love was fantastic in the playoffs last year. I thought both quarterbacks, when healthy, were pretty good. I would trust Love more, though. Yeah, I think I trust Love a little more. I think that the uh, the way the Packers did it was pretty beneficiary to both sides, right? You have a four-year deal. So Love will get another big contract if he is the guy, whereas if he's not the guy, the Packers can get out of it after a couple of years. So it's not uh, horrible for either side. I With Tua, though, you know, you spent a lot of money all around Tua, bringing in great wide receivers. And some fast -ass guy. You've got Tyree Kill. You've got a bunch of great players. You know, you've got a decent defense. Um, so I, I would be cautionary. To, and I love Tua, but... When your quarterback isn't necessarily making everyone else around you better, like, are you worthy? And I know it's just how the NFL is. And like, Dak's going to get the next big one because he's up and he'll probably get close to 60 million, if not more than 60 million. What'll be interesting is in a year, what the 49ers do with Brock Purdy, because he's kind of a guy who has great stats and great numbers, but I don't think everybody believes that like, he should be paid like the top quarterback in the NFL or that he should be getting $55 million a year, or let alone 60 or even more than that when it, his deal is up. Yeah. And Shanahan kind of strikes me as the kind of guy that's going to come in and just say, okay, we'll just draft, draft another Brock Purdy. Like yeah. we literally picked him last in the draft, pick a guy higher than last. And maybe we'll just do this again. I would guess that I agree with that assessment. I would guess that they'll handle Brock Purdy the way Washington handled Kirk Cousins. Like, here's our price. Mm -hmm. If you think that you are worthy of what uh, Tua or Love got the year prior, and I mean, God forbid he wants Dak Prescott money, 
I mean, best of luck to him. I'm not giving him but, because doesn't that mess up the entire 49ers? Like, yeah, of course, the but, model but that that's they run. Where, that's where you have to also realize these team, teams don't have to give these guys these contracts. No, they can move along and, and go after and find someone else. So that's why I would put Purdy in the category with Kirk Cousins, where twice now teams have chosen to yeah. move on and off of Kirk Cousins because they don't think he's worthy yeah. of being a top paid quarterback he's he's good mm -hmm. he's very good Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback oh yeah he is not a top five quarterback and therefore two teams now have made the decision that they're better allowing him to go somewhere else Washington did it and Minnesota just did it in this past offseason I can't imagine San Francisco handing the bag to Brock Purdy well, the no, way that say Buffalo has given Josh Allen or even Mahomes with Kansas City. Well, it's the perfect uh, analogy too because you've got a guy in Kirk Cousins who was in the the uh, um, MVP conversation before he hurt himself last year, and Brock Purdy who was in the MVP conversation as well until Lamar took off. So you know you've got two guys that I don't necessarily like. They put up great numbers, yeah. But is it because of the system? Is it because of the players around them? Is it because Kirk Cousins had the best wide receiver in the NFL for a while. Is it because that Purdy's got the best offensive mind in the NFL right now? Like there's a lot to take into account that I don't know if we're just going to see that the next guy up continues to get the most money because sometimes the next guy up, the coach is just like, no, like even Matthew Stafford, like restructured his deal and they figured out something for him to, you know, kind of get a little bit more money. while also say, Hey, like we need to protect ourselves because you're getting up there in age, man. This is probably your last contract. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here because we could be talking about, hopefully we are, because that means he's good in four years talking about, you know, Caleb Williams getting $70 million or $75 million because that might be the trend if we keep going up that way. Tomorrow, the Bears practice at House Hall, 930 practice. Matt Eberflus will speak to the media. Uh, then practice number uh, 10 for the Bears will be Wednesday, 930 a.m. Uh, and then Thursday, the Hall of Fame game is here. The Bears' first preseason game. Uh, that game will be at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. Bears versus the Texans in the Hall of Fame game. Uh, if you have any comments or thoughts, leave it below right here on this channel. He's Adam Abdallah. I'm Chris Bleck. We will cover all the Bears conversation heading into the new season. We're so excited to talk Bears football with you right here on our YouTube channel. Make sure you leave a comment. Also, download the podcast on the ESPN Chicago app. It's After Hours with Adam Abdallah. I'm Chris Black. We'll talk to you later.